Good evening, friends. Stephen Bernoulli with Israeli News Live and Dunun Institute of Biblical Research. And those of you that have not saw this video yet, did Ezekiel prophesy of Jesus Christ in the Dead Sea Scrolls? You really, really should watch this video. This is absolutely amazing right here, where Ezekiel uh, in in the Dead Sea Scrolls it's just a fragment of the of the Book of Ezekiel. And it's where he's going into the bone upon, you know, the flesh upon the bone. He's given the prophecy, may a bone connect with its bone, joint with its joint. Uh, so it happened and said a second time, prophesy and sinews will grow on them and they will be covered with skin all over. And then we get down to, the, to this last verse here, or next to last verse. And he asked the Lord, when will these things happen? And the Lord says to him, and we, uh, we're we missing a little fragment of that verse. Don't know exactly what we're missing, but then he says, and a tree will bend over and straighten up. And of course, me being seeing that, just totally blown away with that because I realized that Jesus Christ is that tree of life. It showed the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, in my opinion. He's also called the righteous branch. Uh, and as the uh, sister, uh, 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 I think her name is Monica, had shared with me there, right here from uh, the uh, from Paul's writing in First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty three. But we preach Christ crucified unto Jews, a stumbling block, and the word stumbling block actually is a bent sapling. Uh, is what it is. It's a small tree, but it's bent over into the Greek's foolishness. And I thought that was fascinating because it shows that Paul knew that portion of the scripture of Ezekiel. And so in that regard, what was Paul saying? In other words, when they preach Christ crucified under the Jews, a bent sapling, they only saw him as a dead Jesus, not the straightened up, not the resurrected Jesus Christ. Uh, or it could just be the fact when he's talking about him being crucified to the Jews, a bent sapling. In other words, showing that it was a crucifixion. Can't really say for sure what Paul was thinking about when he wrote that, but it's evident that he knew the verse there of Ezekiel that we're not, uh, many of us do not realize today. So, Wanted to share that with you. Now, I want to get into Zechariah just a little bit. Uh, and I normally go into, in chapter 8, we normally go way down here. We get to the last part here about the 10 people of the nations taking a hold of a Jewish man. But want to, let's start back a little bit earlier on in the chapter, because I want to point out some other uh, amazing things here that clearly show a prophecy uh, that was fulfilled 2,000 years ago. And we're going to briefly look at also Zechariah 12. And both these books I have put in the future myself many, many times in the past. So these are corrections on my part as well. Uh, anyway, let's start right here. Verse 3, uh, Zechariah chapter 8. Thus saith the Lord, I return in design and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Uh, by the way, if you look in the Dead Sea Scrolls, that's another interesting aspect as well. When it speaks about prophesied of the mountains, they often uh, say that this is symbology of the prophets. So it says, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain, then that would be the holy prophet, which would be Christ Jesus. So what is that? It is telling us that God himself is in, in Zion. He's dwelling in the midst of Jerusalem. But that mountain could, in that case, actually represent Christ himself, that he's dwelling within the prophet himself. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, there shall yet old men and old women sit in the broad places of Jerusalem, every man with his staff in his hand for very age. And I think that there's another implication of this right here. You have to remember, it was a prophecy uh, during the times, Jeremiah said that they would be in captivity for 70 years down in Babylon. They come back and it shows that time, how much time would have actually passed after they had came back. 
So much time would have passed that there would be very aged men and women that would be sitting in the streets. Something that we don't normally think about is that it shows the time frame. Dropping down to verse six, I want to save time here. So let's drop, we're going to skip some verses as we go. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in those days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts. And again, the word remnant, you're going to see that quite often. The remnant consistently in Zechariah is referring to the house of Israel. Shait, as we say in Hebrew. All right, so let's keep that in mind. Verse 7, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. Now you know that remnant is speaking of the house of Israel because the house of Judah was only held in captivity in the east in uh, Babylon. They were not in the west country. They were in the east. But God said he's going to save them from the west and the east country. I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and they shall be my people and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Now, let's quickly, though, let's jump over to the book of Acts, because this is what we need to understand. when We look at the book of Acts right here. Chapter two, uh, we just I didn't pull it up in time. I meant to, but I forgot to pull this up. Uh, so we have here when uh, let's see. And now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were all amazed, marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these Galileans uh, speak the uh, Galileans? And now here, how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. All right? The house of Israel, as we know, Acts chapter 2, verse 36 Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that that God hath made that same Jesus whom you cru have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So even the house of Israel, a remnant was there, and they had been guilty of crucifying Christ. But according to the writings here, they were born in other countries, though, Perithians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, and it names all these different countries of the known world at that time. They were all amazed and doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Others mocking, said these men are full of new wine. Now keep in mind, the house of Israel were not part of the 120 in the upper room, which was the house of Judah. But the scripture clarifies that for us as well in the prophecy. Okay? And they, he says, he says he'll bring them, they'll dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God in the truth and in righteousness. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Yea, they hear in these days these words from the mouth of the prophets that were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, even the temple, that it might be built. And again, that's because it was going to be destroyed, but it would be rebuilt. The only time of the rebuilding of the temple was after the dispersion of 70 AD. Okay, drop down to verse 11. But now I will not be unto the remnant of this people as in the former days. Again, that remnant, la shalit, right, right there, of this people as former days, saith the Lord of hosts. For as the seed of peace, the vine shall give her fruit. That vine is Christ. And the ground shall give her increase, and the heaven shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to inherit all these things. And it shall come to pass that as you were a curse among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and you shall be a blessing. The only time... God has ever saved both the house of Judah and the house of Israel was when Jesus Christ came on the scene and gave his life for them both. Acts chapter 2 is the testament of the salvation of both houses. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I purpose to do evil unto you, when your fathers provoked me, saith the Lord of hosts, I, and I repented not. So again, I do purpose in these days to do good unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. 
fear ye not. Because both the house of uh, Israel and the house of Judah ended up in captivity. And it was because of what? Because of their sin, because of their idolatry. And even Judah, they went so far as the Levites intermarrying in, uh, in amongst the, 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 the peoples of the land, the Hittite, Perzites, and Jebusites. But God still in his mercy brings them back anyway. Verse 16, these are things that you shall do. Speak ye every man the truth with his neighbor. Execute judgment of truth and peace in your gates. Let none of you devise evil in your hearts against his neighbor and love no false oath for all these things that I hate, saith the Lord. Was that not the message that Jesus brought himself to the people when he was here? Love your neighbor as his self. He was so sick and tired of all their false oaths and how they had uh, trampled over the widows and the orphans. Dropping down to verse 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh month, the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful season. Therefore, love ye truth and peace. All right. Then. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, it shall yet come to pass that there shall come peoples and the inhabitants of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts, and I will go also. The people were so enthralled, even the Syrians were coming to Christ, to Jesus, to hear of him. Yea, many peoples and mighty nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nation, shall even take hold of a skirt of him that is a Jew. Literally, it says, Yehudi, the wing of a Jewish man. Why does it say a wing? Do you not remember Psalms? And there's many places in the book of Psalms that it says this. It's just one place. Psalm 17, verse 7. Make passing great thy mercies, O thou that sayest by thy right hand from assailants, them that take refuge in thee. Verse 8. Keep me in the apple of the eye. Hide me in the shadow of thy wings. No wonder why the prophet Zechariah said, Ten people of the nations will take hold of the wing of him that is a Jewish man saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Now, the only reason we have a pluralization after they take a hold, they embrace, they dwell under the shadows of the wings of Jesus Christ, that Jewish man. But the reason we go into a plural, lemor nelecha imchem kishamanu elohim imchem, that we have heard that God is with you in a plural is because when we get to the book of Acts chapter 2, we find out they want to know. They see that God is with them. They know something is going on and they want to be a part of it. And it was the house of Israel, <laughs> right? And they were from what? All those nations. There you go. Elamites, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Rome, Strangers as well, strangers, I mean Jew and Gentile, by the way, Jews and proselytes, they're converts, Cretes and Arabians. They said, we hear the wonderful works of God. Who do they hear it with? The 120 that came out of the upper room. That's why you have that pluralization at the when they say we hear God is with you. It's with the 120. As the scripture also says, and I believe it's in Zechariah, Yes, uh, Zechariah 12, 7, chapter 12, verse 7, the Lord shall also save the tents of Judah first. The glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem be not magnified above Judah. And that's exactly what he did. It was the house of Judah. The 120 that were in the upper room were all from the house of Judah. From those three tribes, Benjamin, Levi, and uh, from Judah, they were the ones that were saved first. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which were the house of Israel that were there, that were dwelling in Jerusalem. That's what it says over in the book of Acts. They were dwelling in Jerusalem. They came afterwards, after the 120 had received the Holy Spirit. They came in and we find out, we go down there that 
uh, ye men of Israel. Notice that verse 2010. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, the man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. That's why the house of Israel was also guilty. There's no future regathering of the house of Israel. The scripture over and over and over says a remnant would return. Isaiah says it. Zechariah says it. And that was only because of the mercy of God that they returned. But as, as you go down, after we find that they were the house of Israel, in verse 36 now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said it to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is what it was. And we get into Zechariah 12. You go back down. We get further down. We get down to verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look unto me because they have thrust him through. Remember Christ being thrust through with the spear? It allowed the water and the blood to come from his side. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. They shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. In that day shall there be great mourning in Jerusalem as in the morning of Hadad Rimon in the valley of Megiddon. And the land shall mourn every family apart. I used to think because it was given by family names that it had not been fulfilled yet, that it wasn't according to tribal order. But there was always one part of this that puzzled me. And I kind of brushed it off and used it as the Samaritans is why. And I'll get to it. Let me just go ahead and read it. And the land shall mourn every family apart, the family of the house of David apart, their wives apart. He's from the tribe of Judah. The family of the house of Nathan, also from the tribe of Judah, apart, their wives apart. The family of the house of Levi apart, their wives apart. And the family of Shemites apart, which was from the tribe of Benjamin, and their wives apart. But this next verse, verse 14, is what threw me off. I did not realize that it was the house of Israel. Because the word remain is not the correct word. Oh, you could use it, but it's not the correct word. All the families that remain, or it should be Kol Hamishpachot Hanasharit Shirot, all the remnant families, every family apart, and their wives apart. And the thing is, we know this because why? In Hebrew, it's in the plural. We see it up here, right? You see it up here, families, right there, plural. All the families that remain are all the remnant families. And because there's no mishpacha should be just family. If it says every family, it'd be Call mishpacha, but it's mishpachot again. There's no vav in there, no. But it's still pluralized. Every family apart, their wives apart. Actually, alone is what it is. So it tells us because we know it's the remnant, and the word remnant has been continuous in the scripture here, as I was showing you earlier, the word remnant everywhere, la uh, uh, sharit, everywhere we're getting the word remnant here. Again, right here, sharit, um, right here is where it's at. 
the remnant. And every time it speaks of the remnant, he either calls them Jerusalem or the house of Israel, etc. But he clearly showed you that when this happened, when this event takes place, when they take a hold of the skirt of a Jewish man, or they want, in other words, they want to dwell under the wings of the Jewish man. They say that we hear that God is with you. It's so perfect. I mean, the scripture is so perfect. You can't miss it. How can you miss it? It's a Jewish man, one man. And they dwell under the shadow of his wings. But they hear that God is with you. Because the house of Judah, as it says in chapter 12 as well, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The glory of the house of David and the glory of the See, house of David is, is Judah. But the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem be not magnified above Judah. And there's some place over here in Acts here. I didn't, I didn't have it highlighted there. Uh, but it's actually back up here at the top. And maybe we should look at that um, once again. Okay. Um, where we, wherein we were born. Let's see. Um, because they were ta talks about men dwelling in Jerusalem, and uh, let's see here, and there appeared okay, cloven tongues, they feel the Holy Ghost. Okay, yeah, here we go. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, but that word is not Jews in the Greek. Excuse me. Up, oh, I didn't mean for it to do it that way, but that's all right. Is Judeans. But there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Judeans, devout men of every nation under heaven. Right there. They were the, why are they devout? I used to think it's like the 10 righteous. I realize now why God did not burn Sodom and, or excuse me, when God was talking to the angel, or excuse me, when the angel of the Lord or the God himself was talking to Abraham and he asked him if there were 10 righteous in the city, would you spare it? And he said, yes, if I can find 10, I'll spare it. Do you realize he was not talking about Lot's family? In other words, if there were 10 people that had not mingled their seed with that Nephilim bloodline, he would spare it for the sake of them. That's why it says there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Judeans, devout men of every nation under heaven. The house of Israel that had returned and the reason why they were a remnant, just a small group of them, these were the ones that had not mingled their bloodline. Something to think about. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're listening to Israeli News Live and Dunoon Institute. God bless you and thank you for listening.